Hello, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Hit like, hit subscribe. In this video, I'm gonna show a trick that's been working for me. It's um, nothing new. I haven't reinvented the wheel. You can do this with a few different types of plugins. You can do it a few different ways to achieve the same result. But I've been doing it this way. It's been helping and it's been really quick, just a part of my workflow. So I'm gonna share it with you. I'm using FabFilter Satin 2 and I'm trying to achieve basically making a really nice sub for when I'm layering kick drums. As I said, million ways you can go about that, but today I'm gonna to show you how I've been doing it lately this way. So I tend to like to layer kicks in general, two, three, four layers, depending what it needs, whatever it takes really sometimes. And it came about where I threw Satin 2 on to purposely saturate the low end um, to try and sort of thicken it up a little bit. But then something strange happened. I soloed it to sort of see what I was really doing to the to the low band, and it sounded unreal. And I froze it by accident with it still soloed on, and that's how this came about. So let's boogie. So we'll go into a 909 kick. This is just from Ableton. Get it for anywhere you like. And you can do this for any kick. I'm just gonna use a 909. Everyone's familiar with it and it's pretty simple. So if we just solo this now, let's turn it up. Standard, right? So what I've been doing, Fab Filter Pro, uh, sorry, Pro. Fab Filter Satin 2. I'll create a low band. Turn the top one off. And I'm basically, you can, you can use tape, I'll use tape. I'll go gentle saturation, push the driver, play with the dynamics. Put this back to zero. And it's basically a combination of the mix drive and the low end bass. Now generally, when I use satin, I actually do use the EQ a lot when I'm using it. And you see here two bands, only one's active solo that I went down and I really pushed up the low end and you can hear it sort of obviously starting to get a bit out of hand but you can sort of you know find your sweet spot like this and, you know probably go a bit lower leave that there mix That's pretty pretty simple, right? We can achieve that just throwing EQ8 or Q3 on there, rolling the high end off and off we go. But I did notice there was a difference when I was doing it. So I'm gonna freeze that, flatten it to audio, and I can go, consolidate it. Let's turn it, let's have a listen. Get rid of the click. So it's nice, right? Now, if we're gonna then layer a kick, let's go to my boy AS. You know him. I always use his stuff. So good solid kick drum. It's already it's a sample, so it's already got a fair bit in it, it's nice and energetic, but if I'm layering, we can go for a double. So listen. Then obviously we can mix that in and go further with processing. Or we can be a bit more aggressive. Now, let's say we leave it like that, right? Oh, there's a click there. Consolidate. So, you know, to get to what we're hearing now is, is no is no real mystery, right? I know a lot of people like to use reverb, wash it out, um, filter the low end, saturate it, and, and you can, and, and I've done it like that previously in the past. The only difference I found was it was a lot quicker doing it all in satin if you have it, well, for me anyway, because 
I can just solo the band straight away. It's got the four band EQ in it. It's got the saturation in it. I've got other options and I'll go up here to what I did before. So, you know, you got the different types as well. You can get really creative as well. Like I was just using tape on the original sample. Let's have a listen. You know, obviously it's coming from the drive and the band, you know, plus 11 dB. I do have the band level up there. But doing it this way, it's all in one, it's quicker. I found that it gave a really good result for my personal taste and ear. But you know, you can get into all sorts of different layer types. Like I know we're in the low end, but I always drive the EQ as well. Just to see, because I might get a mid band out of it. So we're back up here now, one kick. Let's shrink this. So if we go to the main kick at the top, let's work with this channel now. And again, if I... The good thing is you can go through all these different types. You know, and I'm not even modulating the satin. If you're familiar with it, you know it goes really deep. Yeah, but just, you know, but if I take the solo off, Obviously, we're going to have the drive signal, which could work as well if you want to just process one kick. But I found soloing that low band and then freezing it while it's soloed has helped me a lot, um, especially for my personal taste. You know, and that's... You know, even... You know, and you can do it with any part of the kick drum. You can get your mid-range going. And because it is soloed, you can be a lot more aggressive on the EQ. Um, on top of that, we can obviously go through some of the presets, which are wild. If you are familiar with Saturn 2. Um, we can just solo. That's panning, it's not going to be good for our kick in the low end, but you know, you can go and use all this automation as well. I don't know how they've exactly they've mapped it all, but you know, let's say I only wanted the low, and then like I'd resample that, right? So I'd go all the way through. I know it's sort of panning. I'd make it mono, and then I'd be able to get so many different types of low ends out of there to lay with any top kick drum I want. Um, and lastly, in comparison, because it this end result here that I had at the first example, it's pretty simple, right? A lot of these that have been producing for not even a long amount of time can, can, can get there pretty quick. But I did just set up a little quick chain where, let's say I've got Q3 and, and I, I matched the one I had up here. So Q3, I went to, I'll turn that off for now. So 68 Hertz. 24 dB curve and because I had boosted the low band on the four band EQ on the side of satin and the actual band itself I just threw this on there it's obviously really aggressive but and if we do that we can saturate it and this is Ableton Saturator and you can do it this way of course but I found you sort of got to tweak a few things it wasn't as quick and efficient for my liking. And I couldn't really push it too far because it'd fall apart pretty quick. Like even though I've still used sounds like that before and I would because then I'd process it further. You know, for the ease of satin, if we go back to here. If I go back to Untitled, And let's turn off these again. 
not bad. You know, look how quick. Let's go back to say, you know, 68. So 24, saturation, put the drive up, put the low end up, put the low end up, mix, really push the dynamics. We can take care of that click later. I don't know, it's just faster, it's louder, and I've got more control and I can be more aggressive with it before it starts to sort of break apart. Not to mention the feedback as well. And then you can, you know, go ahead and go nuts with it. Shh, it's all right. Um, so yeah, quick one, nothing exciting, but personal workflow helps me quickly. It's fast. I'm familiar with Saturn. I use it in my mastering chain as well sometimes. So more control. You can map a lot of stuff. The feedback's great. You can switch between the dynamic range and um, you can automate almost every parameter in there. It's a one-stop shop. If you're trying to achieve that sort of rumble or that real nice low-end sub. And lastly, I know I sort of chopped it up to 16ths, but if we go to the original, no, that's the Ableton version, one second. If we go back to here, I can't remember now, but when I just had it as one, um, one bass note, I'll just freeze this, I'll show you quickly. Can't help myself. If I flatten this, yeah, there we go. That's what I was talking about. So, You don't need to, you know, double it, triple it, or quadruple it, but you can just use it as its own to help layer. Like obviously you'd have to do some maybe dynamic EQ to, you know, get some things out of the way and get things moving a little bit, maybe some multi-band, but you, know, you can use them just for nice tails, just to fill in. If you've already got a solid kick sample, you can just sort of throw that in and fill it up. You know, then obviously doing something like that, it won't be too much of a clash, more so because of the way we've shaped how the kick drum doesn't have a huge full uh, tail past the main transient. Then we sort of ramp up like an offbeat bass side chain for that low end. Then, you know, it can just really fatten something up pretty quickly. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. There's more on the way. And, um, let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you're doing it, how you do it, good idea, bad idea, shit house, let me know. I'll leave it there to you. Thank you.